Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know this is a bit different, I'm actually chatting to you guys for once. Um, it's a little bit weird but I'm used to talking to myself so I guess I'll get into it pretty quick. So today I thought I'd do a rig rundown for you guys, uh, show you what I have. Um, this is what I use for sort of live gigging and sort of if I had a session or something, this is a lot of the stuff I would take. But it's not what I really use when I'm recording my YouTube videos, I can do like a whole video on that if you want. Um, I used bits of it on my album Delusions, but that was sort of combined with a lot of other stuff as that was like a big, big production. Um, but very exciting. And this video is sponsored by DistroKid. DistroKid is a music distribution site that distributes your music over all major platforms, including Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, Amazon Music, like any any of them you can think of really. And you pay nineteen dollars ninety nine cents for a whole year and that's for completely unlimited uploads of albums, songs, whatever you want to put out there. You'll also keep 100% of the royalties that you earn from your music. Another amazing thing is they actually can get your music up on these distribution sites within just two to four hours which is crazy because it usually can take up to a week for other distribution services. I'll definitely be using DistroKid when I upload my next album which may be in the works at the moment. So um, yeah, that's exciting. Now you can get 7% off your first year's membership if you use the link www.distrokids.com forward slash VIP forward slash Sophie Guitar. So I'll put the link somewhere down there, up there, wherever, and I'll also put a link for you in the description. So I know so many of you are amazing musicians and you guys really deserve to get your music heard um, and earn a bit of money from it as well and I'd love to hear what you guys have created. So if you guys want to send me any songs once you've got them up on iTunes and stuff, I'd really love to hear them. So, yeah, check them out. Now, on with my gear tour. So, the first thing I'm going to show you guys is the absolute love of my life, the Diesel VH4 heads. Um, it's 100 watt amp, so it's very loud, so I really barely need the volume past like 1, pretty much. Um, especially when I'm playing at home. When I'm playing at gig, maybe I'll turn it to like 3 or something, but um, yeah, very, very powerful amp. Um, it's tube amp, so it's got four KT77 tubes, um, which is great. It's got four separate channels, um, clean, crunch, rhythm, and lead. It's definitely more catered towards um, a rock player, but it is also a very versatile amp. You can get some amazing, amazing clean tones um, and really good sort of crunchy blues as well as like it goes from heavy rock to metal as well. If you want a more, if you're really like a proper heavy, heavy metal player that they also do it. I think it's Diesel Herbert, which, you know, is a great amp and goes really crazy heavy, a little bit more than this one does, but I wanted something a little bit more versatile, so, you know, I can take it to different sessions and I'm not sort of, you know, trapped in one genre particularly. So each channel has gain, volume, treble, middle and bass knob, so even though it looks like an overwhelming display of knobs, it is actually quite straightforward. And then it has sort of the master volume here, um, the parallel loop volume, which is great, so it's like the send and return loop at the back, um, you can alter the volume of that. Then it's got presence and deep as well. It's got a mute button, which I think is really great that a lot of amps overlook, is being able to give you that mute option. So all four channels of this amp have their own channel loop. So at the back there are four separate loops. Um, I use three out of the four. Channel loops one, two, three, and four. And here's the send and return loop here. Um, you can see I've color coded them and labeled them so it's easy, even in the dark, to um, put them in the right place. It's very, you know, extra and unnecessary and a little bit over the top, but you know, that's me. So yeah, I like having the option to be able to do that if I want to, especially as I'm very uncoordinated. So the less pedals I have to press at one time, the better. So I'll show you my foot pedals in a little bit, but I've got the Diesel Columbus um, MIDI pedal here, so I can literally just change and already have the pedals. Pe pedals. I can already have the pedals on and turn to the right settings that I need. So it's really, really simple in a live situation. Just to, you know, all you need to think about is you know what channel you want, and all the pedals are all there. So. I personally find that, you know, a lot easier for me, you know, it's all about for me making things as easy as possible because, you know. Okay, so let's have a listen. So, my first channel is my clean channel, if I turn up the volume. You can see it just sounds really beautiful, really resonant with like open chords and stuff. Um, if you guys know my song After Insanity, there's um, the little clean bit in the middle of that which 
I absolutely love the tone of and that's actually played using this exact setup so using the diesel channel one um, neck pickup just straight as it is <laughs> Gorgeous chord stuff. So now move on to the crunch setting, which is my channel two. So if we want to go like full on, full on cheesy country. guitar lesson probably. Um, so yeah, that's a sort of crunch. <laughs> Any of you who can do that um, chicken picking stuff, um, I can't do it, I'm not even going to try, but um, it would sound really good with that. It's a great country sound, great blues sound, I really recommend it. You can also turn the gain right up which is what I do quite a lot. I'll have it as similar as I can to my channel three, but just at like a quieter volume. So that if there comes a part where I have to um, switch to like a, a rhythm part, which maybe isn't quite as dominant, it's not like the main riff, it's just like a little top line. I'll do that, I'll go to my channel two, I'll have it quieter and um, it just sits in the mix better so it's not like punching out like all the heavy riffs are. The channel three is my balls to the wall rhythm channel. This is what I use rhythm for on pretty much all of my songs and whenever someone wants like a rock, really rock sound, um, you know, I'll go straight to this. I just think it sounds great, I can't fault it. Super loud, super heavy, super punchy and tight. <laughs> great rhythm channel. Um, channel 4 is my lead channel which is pretty much just a boost of my rhythm channel. So yeah that's pretty much how the lead channel sounds. Um, so this is my Palmer cab, it's a 2x12 loaded with Celestian vintage 30 speakers which I think are really the best for rock music. Um, it's closed back to keep the bass in. Um, and Palmer cabs are, are great because they're they're really low price. Like I think this was two hundred and sixty pounds or something, which is about three hundred and forty dollars, something like that. I'm guessing a little bit, but um, yeah, for for a cab like this, you know, with with those sort of speaker speakers in it, it's it's really good, really really powerful. But it's also got this really nice sort of glittery shiny finish which I love you know girls love shiny things so that's definitely a massive plus for me and uh, this tape mark here is just where I put my um, mic during live gigs and stuff I think that's where it sounds best um, so yes yeah, so that's my cab and now I'll move on to the pedals so this is the diesel Columbus pedal um, so zero is my mute button, um, which I think is really important that a lot of people overlook when they're making their MIDI pedal boards, but um, it's really nice to have like those dead stops, those silences, I think they sound really good. And then I've got my channel one, which is my clean channel, channel two, crunch, three, rhythm, and four, lead. So on my clean channel, I've got the Electro Harmonics Holy Grail. And I usually have it set to spring reverb um, at about 9 or 10 o'clock or something. Obviously that sounds so pretty on the clean channel. And then it also has this really cool flurb setting. Um, which is like flanger and reverb put together. Which 
which I just think sounds absolutely gorgeous. And um, I've also got my tremolo, which I don't use that much, but um, it's great for just certain parts to sort of accentuate certain... <laughs> I have my Boss Super Chorus CH1. I just think it sounds so spacey, so pretty. On channel 2, uh, like I said before, I use it as a slightly quieter rhythm channel, and on that, I have my um, EVH Phase 90 by XR. When you play octaves or just adds such a nice layer to like the overall music. I think it's like and on my Send Two channel, I've got my TC Electronics Flashback Delay, which is my favourite delay pedal of all time. Um, I pretty much always have my settings set to um, quarter note or crotchet note, um, tape delay. And then I mess around with the, the knobs a little bit. It can do tap tempo, so on some swings I like to do a sort of... So, you know, it'll play to what you've tapped. So, I think that's really cool. So I'll do that sometimes if I want it to fit to a certain song, I'll do that. Um, other than that, I just sort of, you know, have it wherever I... Wherever I fancy. I like to have this across all four channels on the send loop because the delay is just my favourite um, effects pedal and I like to have it as much as possible. Then my lead channel, the pedal I have on this is my pitchfork, um, which I'll usually have on dual, blend at about 10 or 11 o'clock and um, usually it'll just be the first octave. <laughs> above and below the note you're playing, um, you can change it so it's just a high octave, or you can change it so it's just a low octave, then you can also do different um, intervals as well, so it's sort of a harmonizer pedal as well as an octave pedal, so for example perfect fifth, gross if you want to really creep people out. What we would do when we were like recording some stuff is um, we'd like hide that we'd put in the pitchfork or something when someone was trying to like play their guitar and we'd put it on minus second, turn the blend all the way up so they'd be playing and they're like trying to work something out and they're like why doesn't this sound good and it's just because we keep just turning the pitchfork on and off so they have no idea what they're playing. So, great fun pedal, really recommend it if you want to troll people, it's definitely, definitely worth having. And then, um, finally in my sort of guitar to amp, normal, normal thing, I've got my noise suppressor, the um, Boss NS2, which is an amazing noise suppressor, it's just with an amp like this, 100 watt amp, you really, really need a noise suppressor because it's so loud, the buzz is absolutely massive. And then I've got my wah, you know, sounds like this. This is a Dunlop Crybaby Wah. Um, I think it's good. It's a little bit um, too extreme for me. It has a big, you know, sort of jump from um, when you press it down to when you put it up, and it's a little bit much for what I want. Um, so I'm interested in getting um, one that's slightly more subtle. Uh, one that you can use a lot in sort of rock lead tones that isn't like this massive Jimi Hendrix sort of sort of vibe. So if you guys have any suggestions, let me know down in the comments. And then I have my tuner, which sounds like this, which is very pretty indeed. Uh, silence. No, a bit is you know TC Electronics Polytune um, does what it says on the tin really. You know, tunes your guitar. Very very easy to see. Really bright, so you can see in a dark situation. Just, Great, great tuner. Also, if I'm gigging somewhere and I don't have the opportunity to bring this head in this cab, um, say I have to use a house amp or something, 
I use my own, um, I've also got my own distortion pedals. I use the Friedman B OD distortion, which is amazing, really, really recommend it. Very heavy, very rocky. For solos and stuff, I use the Tube Screamer Mini by Ibanez, which is great and it doesn't take up like any room on your pedal board, so really, really good. But these probably before or after the noise suppressor of the um, amp to guitar loop, so. That's where they go, if I can't use my diesel. I also have the Voodoo Pedal Plower 2 Plus to power everything, which works great, really quiet. Um, it's got 8 9 volt inputs, and all of my pedals are 9 volts, so that works pretty well. And then I just daisy chain the tuner to the noise presser. We can't forget the old workhorse, this is Gibson Les Paul 2015 series, 120th anniversary, um, really great guitar, just so versatile for everything, great for heavy rock, what I'm playing, really easy to play, like the action is really, really low, so it's really, you know, your fingers just like glide across it. It did come with that mini e-tune thing, but I swiftly got it taken off, because I think we can all agree that it's pretty garbage um, to have like a little robot tune your guitar for you. Uh, I replaced it with Grover Deluxe tuners and they're amazing at holding tuning, really really recommend them. Yeah, you know, it's made of made of wood, it has little metal lines going down it. Yeah, it's got coil cap, uh, tone knob, neat little boost switch here. So it is an active guitar, you do have to put a battery in the back. Um, yeah, pickup selector, three way, uh, humbuckers, you know, standard 10 to 46. Um, generally, I use Ernie Bull or Elixir if I'm feeling a bit um, fancy and I have some extra money. As picks, I use uh, Gibson Heavy Picks, which look like that. Um, pretty standard, really. I think they're about um, somewhere between 0 0.9 and 1 millimetre thickness. I'm not sure exactly. But um, yeah, I just prefer them. The little Gibson logo acts as a bit of a grip as well, so that's really good. You can get them for like 13 quid for a little pack of 50. Um, in a neat little tin, I just always keep this on my amp, so if ever you need a pick, you can go on. Yeah, that's pretty much it for my gear tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any comments or suggestions about ways I could improve the pedal board or anything, let me know down in the comments below. Remember to check out DistroKid if you're thinking about releasing music. Got the um, link www.distrokid.com forward slash VIP forward slash Sophie Guitar for 7% off uh, your first year subscription. Also recently made a Patreon if you guys want to sponsor me because um, I've now finished uni so I'm in the big wide world of unemployment now and I love making these videos for you, I love making music, it's my passion so if you guys want to help me along my journey head over to my Patreon, um, I'll put the link somewhere, it'll be definitely be in the description, I'll put it somewhere on the screen as well, go over there you can sponsor me as little as one dollar to a hundred dollars a month whatever whatever you want and you get different perks for however much you you pledge and i'll be posting loads of behind the scenes stuff there if you're interested go and please go and check out that and sponsor me really help me out and i really appreciate it so yeah thank you so much for watching and thanks for being part of my family and keep rocking guys <laughs>